Hi everybody, welcome to Bible Geeks. We are in week two of season five. We're talking about hell. And in this second video, we're gonna be talking about eschatology in the Old Testament as it pertains to the abode of the dead. So this is the second week of Surprised by Hope and I'm taking some time out to sort through the words in the vocabulary that are used throughout the Bible to talk about the abode of the dead. I think it's really important that we understand those things so that we're not blindsided by people who claim to know everything or um, non-believers who want to try and trip us up by quoting pagan mythology that may or may not be alluded to in the Bible. So we're going to get into these words. I think Bible Geeks is exactly the place where we, sh uh, we should be doing that. So Old Testament eschatology, Sheol, Hades, the pit, Abaddon, what are these things? So let's start at the beginning. Words you are going to see the most uh, in the Old Testament, Sheol. Uh, so it's quoted 66 times, or quoted, it's used 66 times. I was uh, relying on the New Revised Standard for this. And so I believe there may actually be some Apocrypha quotes uh, right there. But uh, certainly not an infrequent word whatsoever if it shows up 66 times. So Sheol, you can see from Lagos here, the... Uh, the definition described wasteland, void, and underworld. Um, I think those are pretty good definitions. Um, one of the first quotes, if not the first quote, actually, I'm just going to do this live right now. Uh, totally spontaneous. This is not planned. Uh, but let's do a search here uh, for Sheol. Oh, let's see where it shows up. All passages in the New Revised Standard. Yep, this is the first mention right here. Oh, you guys can't see that very well. Uh, yeah, the first mention is here in uh, Genesis 37, 35. So the first mention of hell uh, right down here is actually the story of Joseph and his brothers, specifically what happens when uh, Jacob sees the, uh, the dream coat that uh, Joseph's brother soaked in the blood to make it seem like he had been killed. So Jacob said, it is my son's robe, a wild animal has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his garments. This was something that was done uh, by the Jewish people, Israeli people, when they were uh, suffering, expressing grief. Put sackcloth on his loins, that was another one, uh, and mourned his son for many days. All his sons and his daughters sought to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted and said, no, I shall go down to Sheol to my son mourning. Thus his father bewailed him. So that's the first place that we see it. His, um, and we can glean a little bit of understanding from here. Uh, he's without a doubt torn to pieces. A wild animal has devoured him, so he's dead. His son then, I shall go down to Sheol to my son mourning. So uh, Sheol is now where his son is, according to Jacob's usage. And Sheol is down. And Sheol is also where Jacob expects to go. It's not clear from this if this is uh, a I will join my son in death uh, kind of thing or kind of a Orpheus and Eurydice like um, journey to the underworld. Um, it seems much more to be the former, especially because there isn't any like epic journey to the underworld here, but uh, that doesn't come out. It's not clear right here. But going to Sheol is also something worth mourning. We have the sackcloth on loins, um, torn garments. This is typical uh, mourning behavior seen throughout the Bible. Uh, so that's a, where we first see this concept. It's where the dead go, uh, or at least where Joseph went and where Jacob expects to go. Now, in the Greek, we see Sheol translated as Hades. Now, you've probably heard of Hades before if you've taken uh, any... Western civilization class, and you've looked at classical mythology, this is typically covered, I think, in elementary schools in the United States, um, if not middle schools. Like, you'll look at Greek mythology and those epic stories, and Hades was the realm of the dead as well as the lord of the underworld. Uh, so it had this dual meaning of sometimes referring to a place and sometimes referring to a person, and the person and the place were conflated together. So Hades here... Um, is any time in the Old Testament where uh, you see the word Sheol, um, you will see in the Greek translation, uh, the Septuagint. And by the way, if you see LXX, um, so that's the Roman numeral 70, uh, Septuagint, Sept, 70, 
uh, that's what it's referring to. It's referring to the Greek translation of the Old Testament. Uh, rumor has it that um, it was 70 translators who uh, put that together. Uh, and why am I thinking it was like 70 translators in 70 days and it was thought of as a miracle? Uh, I should check up on that. But 70 translators uh, is where I recall the number 70 coming from. But anyway, you see uh, here the usage. So wasteland, underworld, void, Sheol. So Hades then also seems to have other uses. This includes uh, New Testament. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, it's used to translate some other words in Hebrew that I cannot pronounce. Uh, but you can see death, dying, uh, wasteland, void, uh, stone, cistern, pitfall, world of the dead. Uh, that would be pit. We'll see that later. Uh, Lord, Master, God. Um, so, yeah, you, you've got this idea that it's associated with death, uh, which is consistent with what we saw before on the, uh, on the previous text. So that's what you see in Greek. It'll be Hebrew, Sheol, Greek, uh, Hades, Hades. Um, all right. So what do we know about Sheol? What can we glean from the text? I thought this one uh, right here from Job was actually a really great summary of the understanding of Sheol. So from Job chapter 17, the light, they say, is near to the darkness. If I look for Sheol as my house, or if I look to Sheol as my house, if I spread my couch in darkness, if I say to the pit, you are my father, and to the worm, my mother or my sister, where then is my hope? Who will see my hope? Will it go down to the bars of Sheol, or shall we descend together into the dust? So we get a lot of things here that are uh, descriptive of what at least the, um, the author is talking about as being associated with Sheol. So Sheol, uh, here we have darkness associated with Sheol. It's dark. To the pit. It's synonymized here with the pit. Um, so that goes back to what we were looking at before here with Hades, like the stone cistern pitfall. And this goes back to the ground understanding. So remember Jacob said, descend to Sheol. Uh, remember in the last video too, you have um, the Inferno, Dante's Underworld going down. There's truly this idea that it's down there, uh, underworld. And you know people decayed into the ground. Um, and so cisterns were like these super deep pits uh, into the world below. And uh, so like the a well, for, inst for instance, um, was associated with the idea of like a gate to the underworld. Um, and I think that's where you get like, uh, if I say to the pit, you are my father, and to the worm, my mother, or my sister. My, uh, my take on this is that this is related to being in the ground. You see uh, descriptions of maggots or worms uh, being associated with the underworld, that's because in the content, in the idea, um, in the cultural milieu at the time, the zeitgeist, um, the thinking of the times, the underworld was below the ground. Uh, and so these are things, you know, wells go into the ground and worms are in the ground and maggots are in the ground and dampness is in there and darkness is down there. Like, the, these are the ideas that are um, that are coming up. Uh, these are the things that are associated with Sheol, the underworld. Um, and again, we have descent. Descent together into the dust. Uh, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. So we now have, we can build an association here between Sheol and the pit based on the parallelism um, in Job. So another thing to know is that everybody went here, good, bad, or otherwise. Um, so Jacob and Joseph are thought of as really good people in the Bible. David, even in Psalm 30, talks about going to Sheol. Uh, we can pull that up real quick. Uh, go to Psalm 30. Uh, goodness, that was harder than it needed to be. But yeah, okay, so a Psalm of David. Um, O Yahweh, you brought up my soul from Sheol and restored me to life from among those who've gone down to the pit. I will extol you, Yahweh, you drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. Now, he's speaking figuratively here. Uh, he didn't actually descend to the underworld. That's not the point. Um, so, Yahweh, my God, I cried to you for help. You've healed me. O Yahweh, you brought me from my soul in Sheol. 
Uh, this first book of the Psalms, we actually have a whole series on the Psalms uh, and Bible Geeks as well. That would be season three, and I would commend it to you. Um, but in book one, there's a lot of um, reflection on the rebellion against David. And uh, there's a lot of Psalms that are associated with events in his life. So, he, you did not let my foes rejoice over me. I cried to you for help. You've healed me. Basically, he's saying, you brought me back for the brink of death. But his expectation was that his soul would be in Sheol, restore me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Ultimately, the pit is thought of as the destiny for uh, Jacob certainly thought Joseph was there and thought that's where he was going to go. David um, thought that's where he was going to go. The psalmist in Psalm 88 uh, talks about this uh, as well. The psalmist in Psalm 88 appears to be under some kind of discipline. Um, Yahweh of my salvation, when I cry at night, I cry out in your presence. Let my prayer come before you, incline your ear to my cry. My soul is full of troubles and my life draws near to Sheol. Um, now, yeah, your la wrath lies heavy upon me. You overwhelm me with all your waves. So for some reason, you put me in the depths of the pit in the regions of the dark and the deep. There's another, uh, so Sheol, pit, grave, dead, uh, deep. All of these ideas are coming together in describing Sheol. And uh, it seems that the psalmist believes that they've done something worthy of God's wrath. Uh, and sees uh, uh, himself as headed down to darkness is your faithfulness in Abaddon. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but Lord, I cry out to you. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Why do you cast me off? Um, so... The psalmist is calling on God. Uh, so God seems to think that there's some, um, or the psalmist believes that they're under divine wrath, but at the same time, the psalmist is uh, crying out to God. And so to me, this is like a neutral situation. Uh, it's not like clearly David, man after God's own heart. Uh, but at the same time, the this person does seem to be exhibiting the kinds of traits that one would think are pleasing to God. Uh, at least by crying out and relying upon God. And then there's the bad. Uh, the Korahite rebels, um, so I have the quotation here. Uh, this is Moses when people are coming up against him in the desert. If Yahweh decrees something new and the ground opens up its mouth and swallows them up and all that belongs to them, and they will go down alive into Sheol, then you shall know that these men have despised Yahweh. And as soon as he finished as soon as he finished speaking these words, the ground under them was split apart. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up, along with their households, everyone who belonged to Korah and all their goods. So that they, with all that belonged to them, went down and alive to, into Sheol, and the earth closed over them, and they perished in the midst of the assembly. So the Korahite rebels were bad, uh, and they were swallowed up by the earth. Uh, is this an earthquake? Sounds like it. Uh, but what we get from this isn't some kind of uh, description of geology, but rather that uh, people who are considered enemies of God were drawn down into Sheol. So good, bad, or otherwise, you're going to Sheol. It was also called Abaddon. We saw that in Psalm 88 just a moment ago, which literally means destruction or decay. Um, so that's an interesting concept to add in here, that there's something like thermodynamics and entropy appear to be applying in Sheol. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Job 26 is where you could see the relationship between Abaddon and Sheol. Uh, in parallel, parallelism, Sheol is naked before God. Abaddon has no covering. So we see that, uh, that parallel right there where they're equated. We saw that in Psalm 88 as well. So this destruction or decay uh, idea also comes up as related to Sheol. So just summarizing what we got from this. It's the realm of the dead, like the Greek Hades, or the underworld. It's dark. It's below in the ground. Hope is sparse at best, maybe not to be found at all. Um, it's the abode for the righteous and the unrighteous alike. And it's synonymous with the pit, literally the cistern or the well, and destruction. The thing to know here, the thing of all of this that seems to be maybe different than the conception we would have had, is uh, this one right here, that it's the abode for the righteous and the unrighteous alike. Uh, 
ultimately the fate of everybody was to go to the underworld. That is what they expected in the Old Testament. There's not this distinction between good and bad, good going to the good place and bad people going to the bad place. Uh, so, yeah, the um, I got ahead of myself a bit, but what Sheol not like, fire or torment, we didn't see that associated with Sheol. Um, some scholars dispute this. They will go to apocryphal literature. They might go to like Isaiah 14, 15 um, and talk about uh, suffering that appears to be occurring for the kings in Sheol. Um, but there's no mention of fire uh, or fiery judgment uh, associated with Sheol. Um, separation between the righteous and the wicked is not part of Sheol. Again, some scholars dispute this. Um, these things are, are difficult. We're going with the data that we got. Um, and so I, I think some of these questions, really it starts to push outside of the Old Testament, uh, if you ask me. Um, there are other literature that has associations with Sheol and separation of the righteous and the wicked. In Greek mythology, for instance, there was Elysium uh, in the underworld, which was the, a good place. Uh, and then there was the bad place. Um, at least in some Greek writings. And some scholars say that there's evidence of the strains of Elysium coming through in the Old Testament. Uh, they have a much stronger case in the New Testament than in the Old Testament. Uh, but it's good to like look at that and know the differences. Uh, this is not that fiery pit of torment that we saw before uh, in the first video. It's a different concept, especially because everybody goes there. So I actually am gonna do something a little bit different, something I haven't done before, and play just a quick bit of a video um, with Professor John Walton from Wheaton College on Phil Vischer's podcast, talking about the Old Testament conception of hell and trying to wrap this up um, that way. So I'm gonna turn the volume up and then let's take a listen. Okay, what does the Bible really say about hell? And let's go back to the beginning. What does the Old Testament, what was the Jewish, the ancient Israelite conception of hell? They had none. Right. I actually had just learned this. Or heaven. Correct. Um, that can't be so. They did not have any sense of reward or punishment after death. They... Um, understood the netherworld as a place they called Sheol, and everybody went there. It was not a place of reward, it was not a place of punishment, uh, and that's really all they had. So what they tell their kids to make them behave? Keep the Torah. Santa Claus wouldn't. All right, so there you go. Uh, don't just take it from me. Uh, but I thought that was a good summary. Uh, that's what we've seen in the text. That's what we've seen in um, the passages that we looked at before. And if I uh, look back here, we've been over most of these most of these connections. So Sheol, the abode of the dead, seen as down below the dark, consensus that both the good and the bad go there. It's translated in the Septuagint as uh, Hades, Hades, Greek word for the underworld. You can see this one has both an Old Testament and New Testament. We're going to have to get to. Um, the other side of it later, um, the apocryphal literature starts to get into the idea of ha uh, Hades is including punishment, um, and it has multiple uses in the New Testament. It is sometimes called Abaddon, which is translated in Greek as Apollea, uh, which means destruction. Um, something that I guess we didn't really talk about is that uh, it is sometimes personified, uh, just like the Greek Hades. So destruction, that would be Abaddon, and death say, only a rumor of it has reached our ears. It's not really that important to, for the, our purposes right now to describe what this rumor is. It is just that Abaddon and death say, uh, and they're quoted. So it, it has this simultaneous uh, place and person association. Uh, there's a translation of that that we get later in the New Testament. We don't need to go there. Sheol is also sometimes called the pit, which is literally a cistern in the well. The other thing we didn't talk about so much is the deep. And the reason we didn't talk about that is because uh, the deep, 
the deep has a very broad semantic domain and is seldom associated directly with Sheol, but it will be associated with the abyss um, later. At least I think in, I think it is, but there's not any real direct association because it often does just mean ocean. Um, but it's also the word, the deep, used for the waters of primordial chaos. And uh, this is where monsters like Rahab and Leviathan come from. They're in the deep. So in, in the three-tier universe understanding the heavens above, the earth here, and the um, water below, the underworld was underneath the earth. But then you had beneath that the waters of chaos. And that's where the monsters lived. Um Babylonian myths, this is where Tiamat, the goddess of chaos, was and was vanquished by Marduk, I think, um, as the uh, creation of the cosmos. And uh, you're going to start to see some of these ideas come out in the New Testament conception with the beasts and the locusts emerging from the abyss. So anyway, keep that is the law. <laughs> keep the law. Yep. It's a good idea. Keep the Torah of the law on your lips and the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Um all right, so that's what we have for Old Testament eschatology. The next video is going to get into the New Testament. We'll start talking about the uses of hell, Hades, Gehenna, Tartarus. Uh, we'll talk a bit about the abyss. Um, so please join us for that video to see more about how this idea has developed and then what we should do with it. Uh, thank you, and God bless.